Welcome to another interesting lesson from Dr. Arts Biology. In this lesson, we are going to deal with the brief history of DNA, where the DNA is proven as the genetic material or hereditary material in life. So let us see the history. So the first year that comes is nothing but the 1866. And you know about the person who is nothing but Gregor Johann Mendel, who is considered as the father of genetics. He has conduct, conducted a series of experiments in pea plant, Pisum sativa, and he concluded the results of his experiment by proposing three laws. First one is the law of dominance, and second one is the law of segregation, and third one is the law of independent assortment. Through these three laws, he concluded that actually factors are responsible for a particular character and the factor exists in pairs where one will be dominant and the other one will be recessive. And during gamete formation, these factors will be segregated independently into different gametes. That means it will be separated into different gametes. And also, if you are considering more than one character, the factors of those characters will be independently assorted into gametes, where the assortment of one character will not be interfered with the other assortment of the other character. So that was a contribution by Grigor Johann Mendel. However, his discoveries were hidden for around 50 years and later in 19th you know, scientists like De Vries and all were rediscovering his particular experiment results. Now, the upcoming next year is nothing but 1869. 1869 were Frederick Mischer. He discovered nuclein. So, it was nothing but the acidic substance that is present in the nucleus. And for isolating this or for the discovery of nuclein, he was just observing the nuclei of pus cells and fish spermatozoa. So he has observed the nuclein or the acidic substance in the nucleus of pus cell and fish spermatozoa and he just called the, acid, uh, the acidic substance as the nuclein. Now in 1889, another scientist called Richard Altman has characterized that particular nuclein. So he suggested the name nucleic acid because it is acidic in nature and it contains high phosphorus. So the substance that is called as nuclein by Frederick Mischer is now being called as the nucleic acid and the name was proposed by Richard Altman. Now in 1910, it was Levine who identified more characters of DNA. He said the DNA contains phosphoric acid as well as deoxyribose sugar. In addition to this fact, he also discovered four different types of nucleotides that is present in DNA. So he said that DNA is a polymer, heteropolymer of these four types of nucleotides. Now in 1928, there comes the experiments which proved DNA is the genetic material. So the first experiment in this set is nothing but the Frederick Griffith transforming principle. Okay, for that particular experiment, he has isolated two strains of pneumococcus bacteria. So one is a rough strain and the other one is a smooth strain. Smooth strain is otherwise known as the S strain and it is known so because of the smooth coating or capsule that is covering the bacterial cell. And this covering is actually helping the bacteria to prevent the digestion by the host machinery, immune machinery. Okay, the R strain or rough strain don't have this particular smooth outer coating so it will be known capsulated and as a result it is susceptible to the host immune machinery. So he just injected the R strain into the mouth and as a result it doesn't create any disease condition in particular mouth that he injected. But when he injected the smooth strain or S strain the mouse were died. Now he just injected heat killed a smooth strain. 
at that particular time the mouse live the mouse was living and without dying but when he mixed the r strain with the heat killed s strain the mouse died and also he could isolate the smooth strain active smooth strain from the died mouse okay so as a result he did not injected active smooth strain into the mouse but he injected heat killed the uh, smooth strain and the, the rough strain so something has converted the R strain into smooth strain so something transformed the R strain into smooth strain and that something came from the heat killed smooth strain so as a result uh, he called that something as the transforming principle which convert or which transformed the R strain into smooth strain and that transforming principle came from the heat killed smooth strain so he just made a conclusion like that something from the smooth strain heat killed smooth strain converted or transformed the R strain into smooth strain and that smooth strain is actually responsible for the death of this particular mouth now in the next 1933 to 44 a set of experiment has conducted by the three scientists the Oswald Avery, Colin MacLeod and MacLean McCarthy and they concluded the biochemical nature of the transforming principle and they concluded that transforming principle is nothing but the DNA for their experiment they have set the experiment in this way they have isolated the heat killed smooth strain then they have digested the carbohydrate content or the polysaccharide content of the heat killed smooth strain then they mixed this particular smooth strain with the R strain then injected then what happened the mouse died now in the second set they have removed all the lipid molecules from the heat killed smooth strain and then mixed it with the R strain they injected into mouse then mouse died again they have digested RNA molecule of the the heat killed smooth strain then mixed with the R strain they injected into the mouse and as a result the mouse died and finally they have digested protein also at that time also the mouse were died and uh, at last uh, they have digested the DNA molecule that is present in the heat killed S strain and then when it is mixed with R strain the mouse were living and that did not cause any disease in mouse and as a result uh, mouse were living and by that particular they have concluded that uh, DNA is actually the transforming principle which convert R strain into smooth strain and that is responsible for the death of mouse. Why? Because when DNA is digested, the R strain is not being converted into smooth strain. So that is that's why DNA is the transforming principle. Now, in 1950, there comes another discovery which is it was proposed by the Irving Chargaff and it is known as the Chargaff rule. So he said that for a double stranded DNA, the ratios between adenine and thymine and guanine and cytosine are constant. So this statement we can conclude in this way. Adenine is always equal to thymine because adenine binds with the thymine. Guanine is always equal to cytosine because guanine always binds with the cytosine. If you are taking the ratio of adenine plus thymine to the guanine plus cytosine, it will be a constant and this will be constant for each species. So from species to species, this value will be different. So we know that in case of the bacterial identification and all, we are considering the GC. Okay, how much GC content is there in the DNA? So that is also considered as a factor for classifying bacteria. Okay, then adenine plus guanine to thymine plus cytosine will be always equal to 1 that means division of purine to pyrimidine is always equal to 1 because purine always binds with the pyrimidine so these four statements are there in his conclusion so he actually 
suggested that for a double stranded DNA, the ratios between adenine and thymine and guanine and cytosine are constant. Now, in 1952, another discovery comes. Is nothing but the Alfred Hershey and Martha Chase experiment. So they were given, they are actually given the most scientific evidence for DNA as the genetic material. So for their experiment, they have used a bacteriophage virus and bacterial cell. So they have coated the bacteriophage bacteria bacteriophage virus, the protein coat they have marked with the, the sulfur. 35 and uh, the DNA of the virus they have marked with the phosphorus 32 okay and then they allowed for the infection or for infecting bacteria and then later they have isolated the DNA and as a result if phosphorus their conclusion was like this if phosphorus is present in the isolate from the bacteria then DNA is the genetic material if sulfur is present from the isolate from bacteria then protein will be the genetic material so they could isolate phosphorus 32 from the bacterial isolates and as a result uh, they have proven that uh, the dna is the genetic material so that is the experiment we'll be just discussing this experiment in detail in another lesson as we are just discussing the brief history of dna as a genetic material i am not discussing in detail this particular experiment here now comes the 1953 the x-ray diffraction study so maurice wilkins and rosalind franklin has conducted an x-ray diffraction study and uh, they have given the x-ray diffraction data of dna to the scientific community and it was based on this x-ray diffraction data the double helical nature was proven so helical nature is revealed helical nature of the dna was revealed from the x-ray diffraction data of Maurice Wilkins and Rosalind Franklin. Now, finally, based on Chagov and then Maurice Wilkins and Rosalind Franklin data, James Watson and Francis Crick proposed DNA double helix. So, James Watson and Francis Crick proposed double helix structure of DNA based on Chagov rule and x-ray diffraction data. Here comes the end of the brief history of DNA. So there are so many parts in this particular lesson that is to be discussed in detail. But that particular things we will be discussing in detail in another lesson. So thank you for watching. Thank you for your time. Hope it's helpful, useful for you. And don't forget to subscribe Dr. Arts Biology. Thank you.